Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so my name is Cameron, and I'm here to talk about sex. <laughs> yeah. I feel like all the all the talks so far have been really great, um, and also very serious and very heavy. And mine is kind of like that, but not really. So hopefully it'll be fun. <laughs> Oh yes, um, while I'm presenting, photos are fine to take of me. Um, so I guess the, bless, ugh, <laughs> the best place to start is to talk about my own journey with sex and sex ed and kind of how I got into this field and doing this work. So like many people, I didn't really have um, an adequate sex education formally. Um, my sex talk per se growing up was my mom leaving one of those American Girl, Your Body, and You books, like, on my bed. Yeah, yeah. And I love that thing, but she just, like, left it on my bed, and there was, like, no discussion. That was, like, it. <laughs> so I knew, like, the mechanics of how sex worked and all of that, but I didn't really know anything beyond that. And me being me, I had, like, so many questions, but I didn't really have anyone to talk to about it. I didn't really know where to find resources. So I was a pretty um, confused kid <laughs> growing up, and I sought out these answers on my own, and sometimes they had good results and sometimes not so good results. Um, but that really impacted my own journey into wanting to become a sex educator in the first place. So 2016, I finished my undergrad, um, and I was working for a while, and I decided to get into this field because I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to be able to talk about my own journey and the ways that sex is important and intersects with so many aspects of our lives. Um, and I wanted to be part of that conversation. But even as a professional, I find that um, I'm still having all these questions. And there, I feel like the more that I look at the field and I look to professionals, like I'm finding that we're all kind of having these same questions. How do we talk about these different aspects of our lives and connect it to the work that we're doing with sex. Um, so kind of looking at that, I had a few facts here about sex ed in the classroom and teaching with young people um, in schools uh, and kind of what that looks like. So this was taken from a study from earlier this year um, where in the US, um, Sex ed is required in less than half of all the states, including DC, um, but they don't necessarily have to be comprehensive or accurate, which is really, I mean, okay. <laughs> uh, so 24 states plus DC mandate sex education be taught at all, um, and 18 states require information about contraception. Uh, only 13 states require any sex and or HIV education be medically accurate, which is terrifying. Um, 37 states mandate that information on abstinence be provided whenever sex education is taught. Um, 26 states mandate that abstinence be stressed whenever sex education is taught. And 18 states require that um, students should be instructed to wait until marriage because students are, yeah, okay. And, <laughs> and 12 states, only 12 states, which I thought this was really interesting, only 12 states require that discussion um, be included on sexual orientation. And I thought that that last part was interesting because as a queer person, I'm just like, okay, so what about literally everything else? <laughs> what about identity? Like, what, like all these different questions that are not being answered in the classroom. Um, so kind of me getting back into talking about this outside the classroom because mainly my focus is on workshopping um, and working with people digitally. I wanted to kind of take all these questions that I had and kind of direct them in a way to make sex ed something inclusive, compassionate, and fun, right? Because sex is fun. And I feel like just looking at all of this, um, we can see that sex ed right now as it is in the United States, like it's not something it's still taboo, it's not fun, students aren't, they don't want to talk about this. Like looking at all these stats, do y'all wanna like talk about sex in this way? Yikes, right? <laughs> so the question that I started to ask myself and the question for creating this talk is really how can technology help us to create the sex education that we want to see out in the world? And what I found is that Technology is pretty dope in this way because it's allowing us to create 
the kind of sex education that's individualized to our individual needs as educators, as therapists, as so many sexuality professionals in the spectrum of people within this field. And what's really cool is that everybody is able to kind of take their own personal experiences and work it into um, the ways that they practice and teach and interact with audiences, which is really cool. So that's kind of like the basis behind this talk. I'm gonna spend the rest of the time talking about specific organizations and people within the field that are doing this kind of work um, and where to find them online. So the first list that I have are organizations. Um, and really, this is a growing list. And these lists are not comprehensive by any means, but this is a great, I think, starting point if you're looking to find more information on this. So a group that I'm actually a part of, it's called Women of Color Sexual Health Network. And it's a network of sexuality professionals of color, um, mainly women, but also inclusive of trans and non-binary people um, who talk about sex in different capacities. And what's really cool is that this is very specific to people of color, um, which is still a largely underserved community um, in education at large, but especially with sex ed as well. Um, sex Positive STL um, is a St. Louis-based organization that talks about sex ed as well. Um, Sister Song focuses on reproductive health and reproductive justice. Um, and O School is a digital um, teaching platform where educators create their own streams. They host live streams um, as well. And they talk about different topics from in education relating to like um, education, trauma, all these different things. Uh, conferences. <laughs> conferences are really cool because you get to connect with people in person as well as um, just in the field and a lot of them have um, further resources online as well. So Sex Down South, which is actually happening right now, it's based in Atlanta. Um, and there's like a whole bunch of different talks, but I believe it's, um, there's a very prominent amount of um, educators of color that go there as well. Um, Poly Dallas Millennium, which was started by a black woman um, that is hosted in Dallas every year. Um, and the focus is on consensual non-monogamy. Um, Explore More Summit is not necessarily sex ed focus, um, but it does incorporate sex educators um, in their work utilizing online resources such as social media, um, workshopping, things of that nature. Um, National Sex Ed Conference, which is hosted every year, um, specifically for sex educators, and Woodhall Conference. Um, bloggers are also really important because I think that bloggers kind of bridge the gap between uh, professionals and people that are um, seen as like, um, moving the field forward and also just like regular people, right? So a lot of bloggers, I feel like the field is overall, it's very whitewashed. Um, it's very centered on um, like people with positions of privilege, but these bloggers in particular I found are starting these conversations in really interesting ways. So Poly Role Models is really great. It's to my knowledge, I think the only um, blog that is specifically created by a person of color that um, talks about non-monogamy. And what this blog does, um, my friend Kevin Patterson hosts it and created it, and he interviews different people across the country um, about their non-monogamy, about their polyamory, and they talk about the ways that they are practicing non-monogamy, how that impacts them, and also how their identities um, intersect with how they practice polyamory, creating a more um, like humanized version of it, rather than just like that picture of the three people with feet that like floats around the internet. <laughs> um, Makeup and Sin is a New York-based blogger, um, and she does a lot of really great work. She's also a sex educator at Pleasure Chest, I believe. Um, June is a sex educator that I just um, started following and I'm like obsessed with their work. And they talk a lot about um, disability and like, um, how their identities as a chronically ill person intersect with being a sexuality professional, as well as chronic sex, which hosts, um, that person hosts um, Twitter talks as well that focus on 
disability, and sex. And Pamplin, <laughs> um, I, I know them in real life, their name is Avery, but they also focus a lot on um, intersectionalities of disability within sex. Um, so here are a few YouTubers that I found. Um, it's, it's kind of tricky because of um, different, uh, sorry, I'm having like, <laughs> um, but the different like regulations can impact peop um, how people are able to talk about sex on YouTube in particular, as well as other social media platforms. But Hannah Winton is really great. She talks a lot about her disabilities and how that impacts her teaching sex education. Honestly, Nay um, talks about sex ed from the perspective of a queer black woman. Um, Riley J uh, is a transgender person and talks a lot about media criticisms as well as um, how that relates back to sex education at large in Shan Boudram, as well as a sexologist based in LA. Um, so I personally, my favorite um, form, I guess, <laughs> of educating myself is podcasts. I love them. I feel like they're a really great way to dive into many different topics and kind of get your feet wet, um, even if you're not necessarily that familiar with the topic. So Sexually Liberated Woman was started by, I believe she's Portland-based, um, an educator named Evian Whitney. Um, and she does a lot of work online and particularly on Instagram as a sexuality coach. Um, Sex Gets Real um, is also a really great resource as well. It's hosted by the person that also runs Explore More Summit, um, Down For What Else, Ugh, down for whatever, <laughs> the Dildorks, uh, Queer Sex Ed, and also my own um, podcast that's starting in October 2018. Um, it's going to be called Sex Ed in Color. Um, that's going to be me interviewing sexuality professionals of color and just talking about our work and talking about the ways that we are bringing our own identities um, into the field and creating the work that we want to see. And then there are also people that go, of course, beyond, um, above and beyond how we look at traditional digital platforms, Afrosexology, Erica Hart, Feminista Jones, Sunny Megatron, Melina Williams. Um, these are all people that I kind of look to within the field who are doing fantastic work in addressing, in particular, race and um, gender within the field, um, but kind of go beyond just like, looking at social or um, hosting conferences or live streams or workshops and things of that nature um, and really talk about centralizing their own individual experiences to um, connect to the larger question of what sexuality is and how that evolves into what it can be for people. So, if I want to leave you with anything, I want to say that sex education is important, and I think that technology provides us with tools to expand that and make it inclusive and welcoming for everyone. Um, so you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram as Black Girl Manifest. That is B L K G I R L Manifest, <laughs> and you can also find me on my website. So thank you.